Evo nas u srcu Velike Gorice, na stadionu gdje se počela polako pisati povijest u ugodnom društvu. Vjerujem jako zanimljivom razgovoru. Sa nama je trener Baldas Dambrauskas. Did I tell it correctly? Yes, da. Coach, welcome to our show, to our show Sport Nedjeljom. Hvala. Hvala, molim. Ok, I will start with your last game against Osijek, against coach Nenad Bijelica. Wow, respect coach. Thank you. Yes, yes, it was great. And, you know, I will quote something. What did you say? You said that you could only be satisfied as much as your team had played in the last match. So now you must be very pleased If we speak about the last match, of course, I'm pleased that we, we win the game, but uh, very soon we have a new match in the split against Hajduk. So, Hajduk, yes. So that's the match when it, where we need to concentrate now. And, you know, like if we be in euphoria for a long time, that will not help us to win the next game. So okay. euphoria is only allowed after season ends. So when the season ends, we'll see what we achieved. And then we decide if, if it was good and we have a reason to be in euphoria okay. or if it was no good and then we need to go work and even harder and then to try to reach our targets for the next season. Okay, that is smart thing <laughs> for your players to quote them every day in the locker room. Uh, but now uh, I want to speak a little bit about you. You are coming from a uh, ba basketball country and it is, there is famous Jean Gieris club. Mm -hmm. uh, how you compare life in Croatia and life in uh, Lithuania. Uh, did you maybe um, have now some Croatian ha habits like drinking a lot of coffees? Mm. <laughs> Not necessarily. You know, coffee is a drink, but I cannot say that I drink more than Croatian people because that wouldn't be possible for Lithuanian to drink so much. <laughs> so much so, coffee. Yeah, so much coffee. But, uh, I like the lifestyle here. I like those little coffees, you know, coffee shops, you know, to okay. go into and uh, read the newspaper and have a coffee or to have a meeting. That's, that's a nice, of course, but uh, most of my life or let's say all of my life is consists uh, working, working, working around the football and it's not that much free time. I live here in Velika Gorica, but okay. so it's very convenient for me. Small city, stadium is very close. Uh, whenever you, wherever you live, you know, it takes only five minutes to drive to the stadium, five minutes to, to go back, so that is very good. And I spend most of the time in the stadium, home, okay. or, you know, like going for a walk or going for a run around the Gorica. So that is my lifestyle here. It's here in Velika Gorica. Okay, but did you know something about Croatia before you uh, come here? Yes, of course. You know, like I, you know, we live in Europe, so Croatia is European country. We know about uh, Croatia, okay, you know, like as a former Yugoslavian country, and we sympathize a lot as mm -hmm. Lithuanians to Croatian nation because both uh, of our nations fight for freedom, you know, like and had some suffering and had some really bad times fighting yes, for yes, this yes. independence. So, of course, we know Croatia and, you know, there's a lot of uh, Lithuanian support, Croatian football national team, because this is where, again, we can sympathize uh, with ourselves as a small nation, yes, achieving yes. so much and, you know, achieving great things in football is exactly that what we try to do more in basketball. But football is also very popular in Lithuania and we, we want this. We just don't know how to do it and maybe <laughs> can't to do it and don't have resources to do it. Yes. And Croatia is a very good example for us. Yes, uh, and now uh, when we uh, speaking about uh, Croatian football, um, what do you think about Croatian uh, first, uh, football first league? Uh, did um, that uh, success in Russia uh, put a big focus on Croatian uh, first uh, football league? I'm not sure how it was before World Cup, you know, so I cannot really confirm, uh, con compare those okay. two times, you know, how it was. Was it, was it uh, more 
uh, attention or less attention, but for sure now that league is very strong and I think the league strength is in the setup of the league, is only 10 clubs, it's very big competition and that competition encourages players, coaches, uh, clubs to, to grow, to work harder, to find the resources inside and outside to compete in that league. So for me it's very interesting to work here and uh, uh, I knew of course ab about the league before I was following some games, watching some yeah. games because my former sporting director was working here and we had you know a couple of players uh, from Lithuania playing mm -hmm. in Croatian league in the last couple of years. So it was always interesting environment. Uh, but uh, I think it is even more competitive than I thought it would be. Okay. Because in any championship I used to work, there's always like one or two teams you're going into the game and you know that for sure you're going to win today. Okay, okay. It's just the matter how big the score will be. Is it going to be 1-0 or is it going to okay. be 3-0? Okay. But in Croatia that is completely different. You need to be focused and 100% mm -hmm. every single day as a coach and, and the players because as soon as you relax you will be Yes, punished. defeat. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Uh, okay, uh, for you, uh, that call uh, for Velka Gor uh, to uh, be coach uh, in uh, Gorica uh, was like a challenge. Uh, or some opportunity to, Im to improve yourself and to become even better coach. How was that call uh, for you? I think, you it's, I think it's both. Of course, okay. it is a challenge because I, I recognize and I say, always say that Croatia is higher league uh, that they used to work, uh, for example, Latvia or Lithuania. But uh, I cannot not accept this challenge because this is opportunity to grow. And I think for every football player and for every coach, the most important thing is to be as best you can be and to improve every day. And that's exactly that I'm trying to do. That's exactly that I try to encourage my players to do. And uh, at the moment, Gorica as a club, me as a coach and the players, we're growing together. Yes. Uh, and. Uh... I saw one bird told me that you like to read the books a lot. Yes. Yes, and you read 19 books when was lockdown in Croatia. <laughs> that is true. It is true, but this is just <laughs> just the numbers, you know, like it's not books are not points, you know, you count <laughs> points and you put in the league table. Books you just read, you know, like and okay, I uh, there is a website goodreads.com where okay. you, you know when you read the book you can tag that book in and then you at the end of year or something you can see what books you read and you can okay. uh, recommend them or get recommendations from other people read books descriptions so I just you know like putting on that Goodreads website and and that's how it was seen that it was 19 books on, okay. somehow but but that is normal you know that like, is impressive not normal that is really impressive I don't know. Like, yeah, no, I no, think no. you know. On average, you know, like we uh, we have a group of people in Lithuania, ah, okay, you know, okay, where, okay. where we read together, and have, uh, at the end of every year, okay. we put a list okay. so and publish this on Facebook that the ah, other okay. people can see, see and yes, recommend. Yes. And so there is usually, you know, like when you publish that list per year, is usually more like 55, 56 ah, okay, books. So okay, that's okay. that much. So I think I will reach that target this year as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, uh, you uh, really like sports biographies. And uh, not we, necessarily. Not necessarily. I, like, I okay. like everything. I like classics. I like modern classic. I like fiction, modern fiction, science fiction, and of course, sports is is a tool. You know, like to use books directly okay. for the sport and for coaching. But uh, I think every book you read, it can improve you as a person, and especially you know when you stand up every day in front of 25 yes, people, 25 yes, players, yes. you need to know what to say and you need to sometimes those ideas come and from different sources and one of something. and we, one of these sources are books. Uh, yes. We heard something that you're like standing in a locker room and like boys, you quote something from your books and the boys like, yes, coach, we will do it. Let's go kick <laughs> them. I don't know. <laughs> no, like, you don't know. <laughs> I, I don't remember exactly like this, you know, like, but, you know, Croatian players they don't need to be motivated. Okay, I think yes. they have that in, in, in their yes, blood. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, that, that's true. Uh, but uh, you really like uh, to um, 
may, uh, to make a deep connection with your team. Mm -hmm. And you really like uh, players with strong uh, character. character. Is much. that true? Yes, very much. I think, you know, like those two things are very important in football. And um, in the past, you know, like especially in this Eastern Bloc, like Eastern yes, Europe, yes, yes. the coach was somehow like a general, like mm -hmm. army soldier. Yes, 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 yes. And, uh, and the other side, especially now with new generations, with new generations such as Millennials, Generation X, that coming, you know, like and players born around 2000, this approach, it's, it doesn't work. So now, like, for example, in, uh, in Western countries, in America especially, you know, they teach the opposite. Yes. They say to get to the player as close as possible, where before it used to be, oh, coach is a god and keep the distance yes. from the team, you know, like, and... Uh, and that is not my approach. I like, I like to see human side. Mm -hmm. I like, first of all, to see personality and human side of the players. And for, only then, for me, I can see the player. But human side and the playing side, yes. they, are not, yes, they yes, cannot be separated. Yes. They have to be together. And I think uh, when you understand that, when you're close to the player, you can improve his character, which is not easy. Usually, usually character is formed in childhood, in family, yes. and as a coach, you, you can very little yes. to change, change but, yes. but uh, you don't need to change. The character you need to appreciate, and if you can, to add to add, to improve, but to change, you know, like no, who yes. I am, to change yes. some, some other yes. human being. Yes, yes, that's yeah. true, really true. And uh, about your uh, journey, a journey uh, from England to mm. Gorica, it wasn't easy journey for you. No, it no. wasn't easy, but it's, it was challenging, it was fun, and I think Nothing in life is easy. You, yes. If you want to achieve something, you know, like you want to go through from one obstacle to another obstacle. When I was like 25, I was a little bit losing hope that I can be become a football coach. Okay. Because you know, in Lithuania at that time, I didn't have that opportunity because at that time there was no like this uh, coaching uh, education yes, system yes, yes. how it yes, is now. No, so yes. I emigrated to England. I lived there nearly nine years and I completed my coaching courses, degrees, and finished university in sports science and coaching discipline. So that was like a really good start for my career because I was learning in a football country and that's how I got opportunity to coach in a professional level because in England I was working only at youth level and a little bit with, uh, uh, with adults, but okay. not in professional environment. That was like semi-professional. Okay, did you play, uh, did you play football? Uh, when uh, you were professionally, no. Okay. As a little boy, yes, yes, I played quite, you know, almost every second day or every week or okay. every every day up to I was like 26. Uh, but in Lithuania, I played in third division, so that's okay. not professional level. And in England, you know, just recreationally. But I played, played. a okay. lot at that time. Basketball? Did you try? Yeah, basketball. <laughs> yes, basketball I also played, you know, not, yes. not at very high level, but in Lithuania, you know, like if you play for in school or for school, that, that is already enough. That is, for some countries, they, this is like normal level. Okay, and uh, when, you, uh, when you said about that um, trying to uh, get uh, in a player, uh, how you... Um, how you speak with your players? Uh, like uh, you lose some game. Uh, what is your okay? Now we need to move on. Um, what is your? Uh, you know that that's the I think uh, the biggest misunderstanding for the people in football is uh, to see the football only through result, because. Uh, for the fan, okay, result probably yes. that's what most important because he only sees that team for 90 minutes yes. uh, during the week and if it's win or lose, you know, that's it. He's lost, okay, he's upset a little bit and he goes with his own life, with, with his own work, with his own family till the next game. But for the coach and for the player, game and the result is only like some kind of part of the process yes. because yes. you know like you win or lose life goes on tomorrow you need to be in training yes. after tomorrow you need to be in training and prepare for the next game and uh, that negativity is a very dangerous thing and is not good thing if you lose the game and you like only shout only scream and everybody is down 
it's very difficult to win next game. So it's all the time for the co coach is the leader who sets that tone to find the balance and how coach behaves. Usually yes, that's how yes, the players yes, will be yes. will behave, and uh, and that is like also an art that we coaches try to figure out how it works, you know, because it's also with one team it works that way and you yes, think yes. you find the key yes. and you know, like it's now it's going to be perfect, but then you know, you go to another club and it's completely different yes, because okay. it's different characters, different players. So this is all the time uh, learning, learning about yourself. And as I say, the most important thing is to learn about the players. Because if you don't know what kind of characters are your players, you don't know how to speak with them. What is your main goal with Gorica? I have like a big dream and a dream like based on results, of course. For the results, I want uh, Gorica to be in Europe. I want Gorica to win the medals and I want Gorica to win the title. So okay. that is very simple, very clear and I think for everybody to understand. But uh, the bigger dream is, uh, is like this. You see, when I come here, I found really nice like town, nice people, nice community and I feel like quite accepted. I go yeah. like in town, you know, somebody says all the time, somebody says hello, somebody recognize, some, some ask how was the last game, some wish good luck for the yes. next game. But uh, when you go around the Gorica, everywhere you can see graffitis, you know, like Dinamo Zagreb, Dinamo, uh, okay, okay, uh, okay, okay, Bad Blue okay. Boys and so yes, on. Yes. So it's, I understand that Velika Gorica is very close, close to, to, to Zagreb, Zagreb yes. and maybe a lot of people live here from Zagreb and or mixed and so yes. on. But uh, my dream would be that uh, Gorica people would understand one day that uh, they don't need to be attached to someone else, okay. that they have, have their yes. own community and they have this stadium, this place, and they have their football team. And they can support proud and be proud about their football team. So if like in 10 years time or 15 years time, this stadium will be full of people going crazy about Gorica and wearing Gorica t-shirts proud, I think that would be you know, the the target that I want to see and if I can touch and if I can help and put some input, that would be enough for me. I think that you are already on that way because now uh, you can see uh, little kids here in Gorica yeah. wearing that yeah, t-shirt exactly. and like um, catching players after games. So I think that... Yeah, so yes. maybe those kids are those who play football and uh, here, you know, okay. yeah, here, okay. but uh, I believe this is that is the start when those kids, okay, if they stop playing football, they do something else, they still can relate that this is their team, they know the players, they know, and and we always in Gorica, even now, we have local boys who are grown yes, up here, yes. who who since a kid started to play football and now play, play for the first team. So that's exactly, I think, the purpose of, of this club and for every small community yes, club. Yes, yes. For you, what is success? Wow, this is, is sounds simple, but it's very yes, difficult yes. question. I, I you think know. that I you think, can uh, give me a good answer on I, that. I think, you know, like if I, if I think deep, you know, like I think it's also very simple to wake up in the morning, you know, like, yes. or, or, you know, and Open to know eyes. that, yeah, <laughs> you, you know that you doing the job yes. that you love to do, that you ha have family that you love and you know that you are loved by them, you, you in good health, and you're around yes. people, you're in a good health, and uh, you know you have motivation to wake up early in the morning to go for your dreams and to go for your job. So that's, I think, the simplest answer. And big success? <laughs> and big success, you know, like for me, like professionally as a football coach, maybe it would be, would be to play in like, Champions League group okay. stage every season. Okay. So I think that's that's what I would like to do, you know, like so that means that I'm working for big club, that means that I'm working for the club that can compete at the top level, that can win trophies. And if I'm playing every year, every season in the Champions League, I think that is good enough for me, you know, like and that's I achieved something and then I dream 
maybe about even bigger things. Uh, what is your favorite football club, except Gorica, of course? <laughs> you know, like, there are a couple of clubs that really influence me. I think Jalgiris Vilnius okay. as a football club is the biggest club for me in the world because since I was five years old, that was the club that I was in love and it played in old Soviet Union championship and that was the only club all Lithuania supported and followed. And uh, because of this club, I felt in football. And uh, this club is still important to me. I was head coach of this club. I won trophy. So that was one dream yes. to come true. Uh, the first job in England that I got in professional football club, of course, working with, with youth was Manchester United. So that also the club that I follow. And uh, I was many times there, many times in, in Old Trafford, in, in the environment, okay. in the academy. You know, so I, I was really proud to wear the kit, you know, like with my United badge. So this is on a global scale. And uh, uh, the number three is the clubs that I'm attached the way I worked. And so far I worked in the four clubs in Ekranas, in the Jalgiris, in FK RFS, Latvia, now in Gorica. And every time I go there in, and it becomes more than a club. Ekranas was my first club that gave me professional opportunity to coach. So. Uh, when it went bankrupt, that was like really big shock for me. Okay. This year they recovered, so that's the club that results I'm also following and I try to see what they're trying to do. Jalgiris, as I said, Afkar, FS, I have very deep attachment to the, for the people that they work there and I see exactly the same developing here in, in Velika Gorica. But I think that is very important combination of coach's life. When you are attached, when you are attached to the place, you are attached to the people, you can achieve more because you you don't feel alone and you all this yes. all yes. this uh, place, you know, tries to to give you a lift mm -hmm. and that at the moment Gorica is my favorite club. Your favorite yeah. club. Uh, what do you think about uh, Dinamo, Osek, Hajduk, Rijeka? That uh, four, four, big four, <laughs> four. Yes, yeah. yes. Big whales. Yes, big whales. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, I think the same as everybody, you know, thinks. This is for the biggest clubs in uh, in Croatia. Uh, Dinamo, of course, known all around Europe of their job in the, in European competitions, in Champions League, and this season in Europa League. But uh, I I always knew, you know, those clubs, but I maybe didn't realize before how big okay. Hajduk split is. You know, like how how big following is. Yes. I knew that yes. this is the most successful club from Croatia in old Yugoslavian yes. uh, league. But uh, uh, at the moment, okay, for the club, maybe the results not uh, the best. But I think this is a huge club that deserves much more than it gets. And I, I think only is a matter of the time when this club will be as big as it wants to be. And. Uh, Osijek and Rijeka also, you know, traditional clubs from, uh, I think they have big advantage because they are from the places where they have only one uh, football club in their yes. town in yes, Rijeka yes, yes. and Osijek and all the people can relate to that club. Rijeka was a champion, what, two, three years ago? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, of course, then, then it was big surprise and big shock. I think, you know, in the countries that uh, follow Croatian football because Dinamo hegemony yes. was yes. was yes. uh, uh, cancelled. And uh, of course, all those clubs have big players, you know, support. And uh, it's very interesting for me, like being a coach of uh, Gorica to challenge those clubs. What do you think uh, about, um, is it uh, Dinamo safe for this champion this season? <laughs> I think Can we someone. need to we need to ask Dinamo because uh, uh, I think it's how they gonna be if they gonna be serious if they gonna uh, see the threat and mobilize against that threat I think they will be fine but of course all of us will be waiting for, for yes, Dinamo yes, yes. to asleep to underestimate us to underestimate you know like those other clubs yes. and I think everybody will win. Croatian football only will win if, you know, the other clubs will give competition to Dynamo. Yes. Because 
for Dynamo that means that uh, they will have bigger pool of better players yes. to select. National team will have bigger pool of better players to select and uh, club strength will go up and I think you know that will be better for everyone. And what do you think about uh, Croatian national team? We have um we won that uh, second place in the world and we were like, yes, finally. But now we have that switch of the generation, Modric, uh, Lovren, Vida. What do you think uh, about you, you guys shouldn't be complaining at all about this switch of generation because okay. one good generation will be replaced with another good generation and only time, of course, will be needed, you know, to, to race. Uh, I'm following Croatia from the first European Championship in 1996. Oh, great. Uh, okay. Yes, you know, this uh, 1996 in England together with Portugal in one group with, uh, with Turkey. Like today, I remember this 85th minute uh, goal against Turkey mm -hmm. when uh, Vlaovic ran and uh, was nearly cut by Turkish player <laughs> who got fair play award after because he didn't make a foul and let uh, Vlaovic to score the goal. And then you know that uh, 98 uh, yes. you won the bronze yes. and yes. since then, you know, like 20 yes. years, it yes. was nothing. So again, it was like looking for generation and waiting till that generation will grow and uh, will mature to win. Uh, with all respect, all those players like Luka Modric, even Rakitic, they didn't win uh, yes. second place when they were 20 or 21. Yes. So they win when oh, they okay. were mature and complete players, when they had hundreds of games in Champions League and won Champions League trophies and so on. So now you have like under 21, for example, national team that goes to European Championship. I see that this team is one of the most talented uh, youth generations in, in Europe. So, of course, it will take time. It will take time for those players to grow, grow to yes. to mature. But uh, I think Croatia shouldn't be, be worried and shouldn't be scared <laughs> and just yes. like uh, you know, is the trick is not to be disappointed, not to put that too much unnecessary pr yes, pressure, pressure on the players, yes. those demands, mm, yes. because for young players it's not easy to yes. play in that pressure. But uh, time, of course, only will show. But uh, I think Croatia football in the future will be in a very nice place. Okay, for the end. And uh, I, first I wanted to, uh, to say thank you for this uh, thank wonderful you conversation. You are stay this special, please, that special coach with books. And uh, I also forgot to say you like to running a lot. Yes, yes. I do. <laughs> so I will give you one gift okay. uh, when you run. To when you come back home to drink one beer with okay. your wife. Okay. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And that, and uh, for the end, uh, do you know some Croatian wor words? Yes. Can you say uh, to our uh, to our Hvala, fans? Hvala sve. Doviđenja. 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 <laughs> Doviđenja. A mi idemo dalje. Idemo dalje. Idemo dalje. <laughs>